Welcome back to the channel, Blue Ridge family. So today we're going to do a little bit different take than what you're used to. We're not hiking, we're not camping, we're not out getting into something in the woods somewhere. We're not even cooking. This is a product review. This is one of the first actual product reviews that I've done. I'm excited for the opportunity to get to show you all this and you're seeing this real time. As I'm taking these measurements, as I'm actually reviewing this product and doing all the stuff that we're going to do to run it through its paces, you're going to see it real time. Let's get into this thing. So the product that I'm going to review today is called, it's, the, it's made by Cool RV. And what this does is, in short, it increases the airflow of your air conditioner. Traditionally, what's wrong with RV ACs, and I see this all the time online uh, in these RV groups, tips, tricks, what have you. People are always asking, what can I do to make my RV air conditioner perform better. It's not cool in the camper. Uh, a lot of times if you've got a single unit, uh, they struggle. They just do, especially in hotter climates. I know here in Tennessee, it stays in the low 90s, mid 90s, a lot of humidity. We've been out west. We've seen temperatures around 120 degrees. RV air conditioners by nature are inefficient in what they do, and it has to do with the design of them and how when you when you look at how the actual air is pulled up into them versus how it's actually dropped back out or pushed back out into the vent system there's basically a lot of turbulence this product fixes all that this is what it looks like kind of looks like something off star wars a little bit but you'll see here in just a few minutes we'll go over the actual install of this and i will put a card uh right up here the company's actually got a really good uh, install video a pretty in-depth install video for this which this is super simple but what you're going to get in the box when you order the product is you're going to get this adapter that goes into your uh plenum i keep pointing up there that's where the air conditioner is you're going to get a few extra wire ties you're also going to get a roll of tape so you can tape up any loose seams hey guys and gals real quick I'm going to leave an affiliate link in the description below. If this is a product you think you're interested in, please click on that link. That's going to help the channel. It's going to help Cool RV, and hopefully it's going to help you. So don't forget to look in the description and find that link if you choose to shop this product. So again, the whole purpose of this product is to be able to increase airflow because that's really how you cool these RV air conditioners. I've heard a lot of people say things like it's normal for your RV to be 80 degrees, but can only cool at 20 degrees below ambient temperature. And they're, they're partially right, but the ambient temperature is the temperature actually inside your camper, inside your RV, not the temperature outside. So if it's 100 and 10 degrees, 120 degrees outside, 95, whatever, whatever it is, your RV air conditioner has the capability to cool much, much better than that. The whole goal is to be able to turn that air over as rapidly as possible. So if you increase airflow, you're gonna actually cool off everything better. Uh, that 20 degree, 15 to 20 degree uh, difference in temperature is from the air being sucked into the air conditioner versus the air pushing out. For example, if we come in this camper like three hours ago, I turned it on, it was 97 degrees. Uh, right now, I turned the air conditioners off and it was freezing cold in here at like 71. Probably not even three hours, maybe two hours. Uh, the reason being is we started to pull in the 97 degree air, we were cooling that off to around about 75, 77, 78. My air conditioners, I, I try to maintain them as best I can, so they generally get 18 to 20 degrees difference in temperature. So if you can continue doing that over and over over the course of time turning that air over turning that air over you'll get down to the set temperature that you want so don't think that your air conditioner won't cool down to that 70 75 degrees whatever your uh, specific temperature that you want is they will do it the trick is to get airflow through them and the way you do that is you got to get rid of the turbulence where you're coming out of the plenum and going into the duct work uh, and free that up in order to actually flow everything all right, so here's how we're going to do this test. I enjoy, if, if you've watched any of my videos about my truck fuel mileage, I like data uh, and I like spreadsheets and I like to be able to be visual and show people to, and help them understand why I did what I did and give them the numbers and let them make the choice or the decision for themselves. So what I've got is big word for you and a monitor didn't know what these were called i just called it a wind measurement tool ordered this off amazon and uh, this just measures wind speed and i know there's a, a calculation for like total volume like cubic feet per minute i'm not going to do that i'm not going to get into calculating all that but the best way i can explain this is i'm just going to go to each register which we have one in our bunkhouse 
we have four in our living area, one in our bathroom, two in the master bedroom. So I'm gonna label those and I'm gonna to go to each one of those ducts and I'm gonna measure wind speed. I've already tried to get the camera up here just like a little test run to see if you can see the screen on this and you can't see it very good. So you're just gonna to have to trust the numbers, which I know if you watch the channel, you know I'm an honest guy. I'm not gonna fudge something just to make it look good. But again, you're looking at this real time. The point of this test is number one, to test out this and see what kind of really good increase because I know there's going to be an increase I've got a friend of mine that's already installed one of his or one of these in one of his uh, air conditioners it is exactly the same camper we have has nothing but good things to say about it but number one we're going to compare from a standard factory setup what kind of increase do we get by installing this right here also, you've heard me mention there's a competitor's product that came out a few years ago, and I have installed those before, and they do work. It's a little different way. It's more of a piece of foam. Uh, it's a little different way to achieve the same goal, but we're going to actually compare this product with their product, and we're going to see what the difference, if any, is this better, is it as good, whatever the case may be. So we're going to get factory installed AC with no modifications. We're going to get uh, data for the competitor's product in an AC and then we're going to get the data for uh, the cool RV product installed in the AC and then we'll be able to compare all that I'll put that all on a spreadsheet for you we'll see where this takes us so let's get this thing installed I got ahead of myself we're not installing it yet first we've got to get the data for the AC unit uh, that's it's actually located in our master bedroom and as I said we're just going to get uh, some wind speed numbers and we're gonna see how much air we're pushing out with just a factory install. So let's get that going. All right, so we took some measurements and before we get into what those measurements were, I just wanna, I wanna tell you kind of my thoughts and how I'm going about doing this to try to be fair to both products and try to give you all the best information possible. First and foremost, anytime that you do data, at least from what I've learned in statistics, and I don't know if you've ever took statistics, but I hate statistics, but when you have like a really big outlier, you typically don't include that in the data set because it just kind of skews reality, I guess, so to speak. So we had one vent and that's the one in the bunkhouse that was skewed pretty bad when you ran the living room uh, AC unit. I don't think it had anything to do with the competitor's product being in there. I think it was just the relative location to it versus the actual AC unit. I was getting almost triple the flow out of that particular vent. Now, I, I didn't get flow like that from our bedroom AC, whereas that's where the Cool RV product was going in. Obviously, it's going to be much further away. So for the test, I just completely eliminated that vent period. That way, there's no disadvantage or advantage for either product. So that vent is out. Number two, if you think about the way that these systems are made, and, and if you've got a ducted system, it's basically, it's a loop all the way around the camper. So you're just using the AC unit to inject air into that loop and it travels around that loop, so to speak, and disperses throughout the vents. The initial test that I did for our bedroom AC, which is factory, no product whatsoever in it, I think the numbers that, that you're gonna see, the flow, are slightly increased from if you had two units that did not have a product in them at all. So what I'm saying is, because of the competitor's product, and it would be the exact same with a Cool RV product, because it was in the living room AC, the bedroom AC actually had an advantage or increased flow because you're, you're getting rid of some turbulence in that particular portion of the loop. So hopefully that makes sense. So we're gonna leave those numbers alone. I just wanted you all to know that the increase that you're gonna see from the Cool RV product versus a standard AC with nothing in it, I think, are going to be slightly low because there's already an advantage there because we've created uh, we freed up some flow in the system uh, in that portion that has the competitor's product which remember th it does the exact same thing as cool rv's product so having said all that let's go ahead i've made a graphic here where you can kind of visualize where the flows were at i'll give you some data regarding uh like the comparison of unmodified, the competitor's product, and also the Cool RV product. So you can see a visual to or within the loop. So you're gonna see where Cool RV outperforms the competitor in a couple locations in the vent system. You're gonna see where the competitor outperforms uh, the Cool RV 
in a couple of vent systems. But these ACs are located in totally different portions of this uh, cooling loop. Uh, so just understand to know that when you see this, that's why those numbers kind of fluctuate there. Also, I'll give you a total flow. So I took all of the vents, less the one in the bunkhouse, and combined those to give you a total velocity. And we'll show you a comparison of that. Then we'll talk a little bit more about our final thoughts on the product. Okay, so we've got a graphic here of our grand design reflection, and you'll notice the competitor's AC in the main living quarters, or that's the one that has the competitor's product. In the bedroom, we have the stock AC. I've got the four vents represented in the main living quarters. I've got one in the bathroom, two in the master bedroom, and remember, we're leaving the one in the bunkhouse out uh, because of the outlier, the uh, really badly skewed data. So I'll give you a couple of seconds here to take a look. And we've measured everything in feet per minute because we're doing velocity out of these vents. And these numbers will all be represented on the graph that I'll show you here in just a few minutes. All right, got the numbers. And I'll be honest with you, I was surprised. Uh, there were ducks in our bedroom that had a pretty big difference, but Shannon gets more air than I do. So that's not fair. We're gonna have to change that. But anyways, Got the data for that. So now let's get this air conditioner turned on in the main living quarter. And this is the one that has the competitor's product in it. It's a little different idea, a little different way of going about it, but it does, it does kind of the same thing. So let's get this turned on. Let's get some data from this one right here. Okay, let's take a look at the competitor's flows. So in the previous graphic, we were running the stock AC only. And those numbers that we got from that are listed in yellow. In this graphic, uh, the number or the data collected were running the AC in the main living quarters, and you'll see the difference in those numbers. Uh, some of those are quite significant, so it's definitely doing its job. So I'll give you just a few seconds to take a look here, see the difference or the increase at each one of those vents, and then we'll move along to the install of the Cool RV product. All right, so I got the cover off. Uh, four screws, not a big deal to get that off. Take your filters out and your actual screens and you should be able to access those, access those Sorry, pretty easy. And then what you're gonna have is this right here. So the problem is we pull warm air in over here, we blow cold air out here. But if you look, when we come out of here, if you look in here, in this area, and even in there, is this plant, the panel, you saw the second panel I took off there. As that air comes down and hits, it kind of gets jammed up right in here. So that in and of itself is the major issue. And we've had campers in the past. Uh, one of the first campers we ever had was probably 32 foot about the same size as this with a 13.5 BTU air conditioner would not stay cool uh, we camp many times for softball tournaments and it would never get below 80 degrees the next camper we got had a 15,000 BTU so I thought hey more cooling capacity it should cool better right not the case at all as a matter of fact I didn't realize that there was this issue that goes on up here with this stuff uh, at the time. Uh, obviously, I'm not an RV tech, so I don't think anybody did at the time. Would not cool. Stayed hot all the time. Long story short, that's what's going on with these, and that's why we have so much trouble cooling your RV. So let's go ahead and get the rest of this thing installed. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to look up in here. I'm going to pull this out right here this is coming completely out matter of fact i'll go ahead and pull it out now when i put the product in you'll see in just a minute and i get it tied into these ducts properly you're going to have access to this entire area so the entire surface area of your filter will be used to actually pull air in versus when this was in here you're actually only pulling air in this half of this and again there's a lot of other videos people that, that have done more in-depth uh, work for this right here but for the purposes of this I just want to explain what we're doing and do a fair review of this product so let me go get it let's get this thing installed all right so you saw me plug this into I don't know all the lingo they call it the plenum I think that is this whole thing is the plenum is what they're calling it so you saw where I plugged this in right here snaps in there nice and tight you can see I can pull on it 
it's not coming out. It's natural to have a little bit of play in these right here. As you saw me kind of twist that around, get it in there. So that's normal. Uh, you're not gonna get it to fit like a glove. That's why they supply this tape. Number one, it's to seal everything off. Number two is to kind of hold everything in. So I'm just gonna go through, work around all the corners, get this taped up good, make sure there's no gaps or no open spaces, and we're good to go. Work that piece around in there. All right, so we got all the filters reinstalled, the housing reinstalled. One thing that I will remind you of is you've got to keep uh, the quick dump. So you'll notice that I removed an actual section in the middle of the AC shroud, I guess you'll call it the cover. And that's the quick dump feature. And that is the, uh, on the very ends of these things, you can actually, one of the things that RV manufacturers put on there, you open these louvers up and it dumps all the air out quick to cool your RV out quicker. It's terrible, it doesn't work, it's just, uh, I really don't, I don't know why they do it. It's, it's garbage if, in my opinion, but you've got to keep those closed where you force all of the air uh, through the filter. So just something to keep in mind when you do this, don't open the quick dump. You're not going to help yourself any at all. And you can't really use that anymore, which you're not going to need to because the product uh, turns the air over in RV as we previously discussed. So let's go ahead and get this tested, uh, run through this and look at these numbers. All right, so we got the Cool RV product installed in the bedroom AC, and the yellow numbers on this represent the original uh, unmodified AC that was in the bedroom. And of course, the white numbers represent the flows that we got with the Cool RV at each register. So you can see the significant change, which is good. And for finally the point of the entire video, here's Cool RV in the white numbers. You've got the competitor in yellow, so I'm gonna let you look at this for just a minute. I'm also going to, uh, in the final thoughts, I'm gonna put up a graph so you can, uh, it's a little easier to compare that. Look at total efficiencies because I also added everything together for like total velocity, just added out of every vent. So I've got a little bit more data for you to take a look at. All right, finally got all the data collected, got everything that we need to really talk about this product and have our final conclusions on it. So we're gonna put a graph up first, shows each individual vent and it's got an unmodified AC, it's got the Cool RV product in it and one that's got the competitor's product in it. So you'll notice uh, some of those vents are flowing a little bit better with a Cool RV product, some of them a little bit better with the competitor, but as I stated earlier, a lot of that could be contributed probably to just the location of where these ACs are in the cooling loop. I don't have any kind of data to back that up. That's just kind of how I, I, I think that's probably what it is. And total flow, uh, total velocity out of those vents, the Cool RV product was only about 300 feet per minute less. So I think a lot of that can be contributed to, you'll remember back when I was installing the Cool RV product, it was just a little, had a little bit of give to it side to side, a little slop, so to speak. And that's why I was saying that tape is there to just to hold the product in to seal everything up. So what generally happens across the RV industry is there's, there's differences in openings. And if you've RV'd for very long, you know there's a lot of, there's a lot of differences in manufacturers. So basically that opening uh, can vary from one RV to the next. Now, the goal of this product is to be able to sell this to a lot of different people and for it to fit everybody's needs. So the smallest, I guess, opening you could call it that goes into the ductwork is seven inches, I believe. So that's what they make their product to right now at this particular point in time. So it can fit many different uh, applications. That, that spot alone is probably where we're getting just a a little bit of discrepancy and if you look at uh, this graph here it's going to show that there that the competitor beats cool rv by about three percent uh somewhere in that neighborhood not a huge difference but one of the things that i will say and this is the the biggest difference maker in cool rv's product versus the competitor and that is the simple fact that their product is much much cheaper so you're looking if you look on their website their product is 75 dollars 74 dollars and some change Competitor's product is $170. That's the main kicker for me. And my money 
if you're telling me I can get a very, very similar product, I'm going to save some money. You can buy two of Cool RV's products versus one of the competitor's products. So that is the absolute main, main thing for me. And I think that's probably what a lot of you are going to find also. The biggest deciding factor is price. The second thing is competitor's product, uh, and I've installed a couple of those myself. There are, there are some things you have to take apart and do uh, in the bottom of the air conditioner to, to get that installed. It's a little more in depth. The Cool RV product, it's simple. The hardest part for me was just getting the, uh, where they had rolled the tape up and I couldn't get it loose. So that was literally the hardest part. You snap it in, you plug everything into the sides as far as like into the vent system. That's it. You tape up the seams and there's nothing to it. There really is. You could, I have no doubt I could install another one in 10 minutes if it took that long. So between the price and between the ease of installation, uh, Cool RV hands down absolutely tops the competitor in that respect. And as far as the overall performance, the numbers speak for themselves and I try to be completely transparent and honest with everything that I do in my videos. I want people to be able to make their own decision. So overall, great product. Uh, I'm glad that I had the opportunity to review this product. I also want to mention that RV Life Magazine is doing a, an article that is supposed to be released pretty soon. As a matter of fact, by the time you see this video, it should be out and I'll drop a link to that in the description also. So be sure to check that out. And hey, if you like what you see, hit that subscribe button, drop a comment, hit that like button. I do get quite a bit of comments on my videos. I try to, to leave a response to each and every one of those, and I do appreciate all the comments. Also, from time to time, I'll get emails from folks uh, asking my opinion on things, and I, I do value uh, the fact that you all trust me enough to, to actually ask i try to put out good information and so i appreciate the opportunity to be able to, to show that to you all just to help you all out so till next time